your art with Clark. Hey guys out there in the art world, we are going to draw an optical illusion and we're going to draw a globe so that it looks like it's popping out of the page. I trace this circle. You'll need a uh, tracer and a pencil. So go ahead and do that. And then you will need a ruler and a pencil and we'll start setting the background. Um, this illusion is done with line and uh, when we get to the globe part we're going to bend the lines but let's go ahead and start in with the background and what we're going to do here is I'm going to line this ruler up on the edge and then I'm just going to scoot down and I'm going to line it up on the line before it and you're going to keep going down put it right there When you get to the globe or the circle, you're going to draw along, stop, go to the other side, and continue. And it's insinuated that it's underneath it. You don't see it, but you know it uh, is because it starts here and then picks back up over there. All right, same thing. Put your ruler right there. All right. Go up to the circle, and then continue. And we're going to go all the way. We're going to fast forward right here. The next part, we're going to come in on the side vertically, line it up with the edge of our paper. Let's see if we get it in the frame here like this. We're going to come all the way down. Same thing as we did last time. We're going to line it up. Make sure you're holding that ruler steady when you get to the circle. Stop. And then continue. All right, guys. Now we're going to start working on the globe part. The first, the beginning of this is pretty simple. You're going to take, you can take a ruler. And this is six inches, so three would be half. Just put a little dot. And then I'm going to take, go this way. Six, three would be half. And look at that. It lines up. You just find the middle. Now what I did is I found halfway, three inches is half a six, three inches, and then I lined them up. Or you could just find the middle just by looking. Okay, here's what we're going to do. Now we're going to draw a line going straight up and down like this and then we're going to draw a second line horizontally just straight across and the center part needs to line up with that little dot that you drew now we have like a plus sign all right this part is a little tricky you're going to draw a curve line it's going to look a little bit like the side of a banana and it's going to go like that like the lines on a basketball more or less and then you're gonna space out to where this next one's gonna be about the same it's very important for this optical illusion to work that you start your line right there where that last line was and then end it right there don't start it like up here it won't work all right, go up, curve, 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 and then again, land it right there. Now, this space is too large, so let's add in one more. Again, go back where these lines are, kind of in the center is what I'm going to do. And I'm going to split the difference here, and then I'm going to draw in. Ah, got a little off. I can fix it. Okay, there you go. Now, we're going to do the same thing on the other side. I'm going to fast forward it right now, but it's going to be exactly the same. All right, guys. Well, I forgot to hit record, but I had all my lines going up like that, and it was just the same as the bottom. Now, you have lines going down this way and that way. The spacing is the same back and forth. Now, you're going to turn it this direction. We're going to go from the corner to this corner. You're going to draw another banana shape. Then you're going to connect again from these two corners. And another. 
and then one more. The bending of these lines start making this circle look more like a globe. All right, and then we're going to do the same thing on this side. We're going to bend this in, and I'm trying to keep my spacing the same. Looks like I got a little wider. Oopsie daisy. And then we'll come in over here. And then one more. All right, guys, the next step we're going to be talking about. All right, so there's a lot of cool things you can do with uh, the color. I like to contrast a lot. I like using opposite colors. So I have some complementary colors here. And um, I'm going to go and I'm going to use these. You could add patterns inside this. I've had kiddos do like a circle inside each square and have that circle a different color. It's kind of up to you. Um, for the sake of time, I'm just going to do solid colors right now. Uh, you could do the globe first or you could do the background, but here's how it works. I'm going to take the lighter of the two colors, which is yellow green, and I'm going to just pick a square. Any square at all will be just fine. And then I always outline these. Okay. And then I've laid this a little flatter than I had a moment ago, so down to its side a little bit more. I'm going to color this guy in. Okay, and then now from this point, this is in charge of the rest of the colors in the globe. While you're coloring the globe, stay in the globe. The background and the uh, globe pattern, they don't match up because, see, they're not lining up. This green square is where is our starting point and you always go from a corner so you never go sideways it's a checker pattern so i would come down that direction right there so then I'd outline this one color him in okay and then if we went diagonally this square and this square would go and let me show you. I'll color this guy in. And this one, which kind of looks like a triangle because it got squished. But Now, here's the tricky part. There is no more diagonal corners here. This ends right there. A lot of folks get mixed up when they're doing this. The only way you can go with this is down here through this diagonal. So I will outline this. Okay, later on this square right here, the whole thing will be red violet. All right, and then now I'm gonna go down and you could just keep going diagonally. See, we'll put this one in. And you can go diagonal in any direction. So if I come up this way, see it goes there. It also comes down here. So let me color that in. And it goes up there. Then right here. And hopefully you're starting to get the idea now. The main thing is, is you go through the corners of these squares and then just keep traveling around. It's unnecessary to draw those lines. I just wanted you to see those. But um, let me fast forward through this and just kind of watch what happens. Now one thing I want to mention. I. Uh, Adjusted a line here and it looks like I erased just a little bit, but be careful when you do that because I almost got mixed up But there should be a line right there. So if that's the case, it's really hard to tell But there is a diagonal coming through right there. So to follow my pattern It would come on across here I almost got mixed up in this spot and it's easy to do if you have to make some corrections and erase or if your lines are just a little off so there you have it, folks. Let's go back to fast forward. Okay, there you have it, guys. It is all colored in. <clears throat> One thing I uh, notice when I teach this, um, 
kiddos will accidentally make a mistake and then they'll ask me hey do you have any white out or can i cut this out and i would say those probably aren't the best solutions really if you can if you do make a mistake try to maybe i've seen kids like layer some colors and change it up and try to work with the mistake uh, but cutting it out look i did make a mistake i left one uh, cutting it out doesn't work very well and white out definitely doesn't work so just to let you know all right you guys i like to start from the edge on these and what i do is i'll just go in they do not have to match up with the globe they actually they will not match up with it so i'll pick this corner over here and then i'll just outline and this this will be my starting point you could have started anywhere and guys, all we are doing right now is creating a checkered pattern. So I skip one, the outline, come on in all the way across. Okay, come on over right here. All right, and we're gonna go all the way across here with this. All right, and then I would go all the way across, but just to show you, we come down, and I like to go to an area that's not right next to this globe, and I start filling it in and then when I get up to the globe, I'm going to show you what we're going to do. So I'm going to fast forward the video and I'm going to start filling this in and go across here. We get up next to the globe. I'll stop the video again and uh, tell you what. One thing to note while you're doing this, when you're going through, always go right next to a color that you just put down. Never skip over and color like on the other side over here or anywhere else. The chances of it perfectly lining up again are pretty, pretty slim. So it could happen, but I doubt it. So stick with what you're doing. Keep a pattern going. I know these are okay because we're still doing every other one. These guys are lining up. But don't work ahead and go to the other side. It'll, uh, you'll be glad that you didn't. I don't know if you can tell this guys but in the video I've come right up next to the globe but I haven't quite finished it I went through here and then I just traveled around all the open areas until I got this whole thing filled in now I need to go back in and get right next to the globe and what I'm gonna do is piggyback off these checkers that are further down so I can see clearly that this needs to be colored in Even though it's not a complete checker, you can tell pretty easily this one. Part of it is hidden under the globe, but that's part of the illusion. And then we'll come over here and you can just follow along any direction you want to go. But I'm just going to go around this globe and fill in any missing colors. One thing to note. When you outline like this and then you color, it's nice to uh, point the tip of your marker towards the outside. That way, if, you're, you, if you approach it a different way, like uh, pointing on the inside, this cone might uh, make marks in places you don't want them. All right, guys, I'm gonna fast forward the video. Hey guys, this next part is pretty simple. All the white spots we're gonna fill in. If you uh, got out of the lines a little bit, you can clean it up on this next one. 
but I'm gonna fast forward through the video and color the rest of it in with this raspberry color. Okay guys, we're gonna put the final touch on this globe. Right now it's still laying a little flat and the way you uh, bring it out is to break this line up. I'll do that with chalk pastel. I like to apply it when it's a little rounded out on the edge. And you gotta, it's a little tricky to get it right on the pencil line, but we're going to lightly dust on a uh, line all the way around the pencil line uh, circle and you want to just lightly not like that that's permanent that's like a tattoo you can't get rid of it once you start blending it you're gonna still see that line also when you're brushing it on you don't want gaps in the line because then it's hard to blend them with your finger back to, together here so you got to try to pull it together try not to go too far in too far out try to go right on that pencil line and just dust around. I'm not applying a lot of pressure, but I do want to get some chalk for me to blend onto here. All the way around. And whenever you blend this with your finger, you wanna blend in a circular pattern you don't want to go out because you'll get streaks all around. When you're going like this, you don't want to shoot out like that because then you'll get streaks going around. You want to stay on that line. So here I go. I can slowly move my way up onto the globe and slowly move out. I'm going to mix. If it's not blending, you can push a little harder with your finger. Different chalks behave a little differently. I'm gonna go all the way around here, just blending, 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 and creating a shadow to break these two lines up to make this look like it's more three-dimensional looking. So when I say three-dimensional, this uh, picture is not actually three-dimensional. It uh, is made to look three-dimensional. That's a little dark right there. I wish I hadn't applied so much. It's made to look three-dimensional. You gotta have length, width, and depth and pop out to really be three-dimensional. But that is it, guys. That is the end of the project. I hope you enjoyed it. Have a great week.